Well, the president spoke on a bunch of different things during the rally in Ohio tonight, which evoked his most raucous gatherings on the campaign trail. We want this country that we love so much, America, to be strong, proud, and free, which means America must also be united. Because when America is united, America is totally unstoppable. Although I'll be totally honest with you, even if it's not united, we're unstoppable, so don't worry about it. Congressman Eric Swalwell was watching some of that speech here on our set in Washington. He represents the state of California, and he joins us tonight. He's a Democrat, by the way. Um, Congressman, thanks for coming on. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me back. So you've been deeply involved in this Russia stuff. We've been covering it here. There's all the drama with Jeff Sessions. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. But when you strip away that stuff, some of which is significant, some of it's not, you get to the reason Trump got elected, which was an economic message aimed at the middle class. Agreed. And that's essentially what he articulated tonight. Is there anything about that that you disagree with as a Democrat? He identified economic anxieties that were out there. The problem is, I think, his involvement with Russia, the cost of that right now, is he's not able to deliver on it. So those people in the crowd <laughs> who are counting on these good jobs, you know, trade deals to be reformed and health care uh, to be given to them, they're not getting any of that because it's a mess in Washington. That is right the greatest, I think it's one of the greatest responses I've ever heard. That's like the arsonist saying, I'd love to stay at your house, but it burned down. <laughs> I mean, it's, the it's reason the truth, he's embroiled it. No, no, no. It's not like Vladimir Putin inserted himself into the politics of this country, despite your claims. It's that the Democratic Party made up this bizarre and complex narrative about Trump being in bed with Putin and then just par and, and Trump didn't respond well in some cases, including today. But basically, it paralyzed politics in Washington. So you're sad he wasn't able to enact his policies because of the things that you did? No, I think his involvement is the reason he has, he's paying the price now. The deep involvement that they had with Russia is now coming home to roost. And the sad thing is that people actually were counting on him to deliver. And now everyone is saying, Wait, so when now can you you're deliver? telling, well, this, I mean, this is breaking yeah. news. Could we get a banner underneath? <laughs> um, you're telling me that you agreed with his program all along. No, you told us this earlier. I agreed that he identified economic anxieties that were out there. there there's no question that people right. you know, want better jobs, they want better wages, they want a better future for their kids. They're not getting any of that right now. But why didn't you guys run on that last time? Well, we did. And it was drowned oh. out, uh, and we better run on it next time, and we are. I wonder, we had a long conversation about this yesterday uh, with a member of your caucus, smart guy, and I came away thinking that he was probably pretty sincere. He thinks the party should pivot from this identity politics lunacy, which is a cul-de-sac in the end, uh, to uh, you know, kind of soft populism on economics. But is there any evidence that your base wants it? You don't represent the middle class anymore. You're the party of the rich and the poor. The numbers show it. So, okay. like, who's calling for this exactly? Yeah. I am. I know my colleagues are. Uh, we believe that, you know, if you invest in people from the schoolhouse to the retraining that you really need for the displacement that's out there, if you give people health care, that they're going to be with you. And so we're going to tell them over the next two years, we're for you. And he's not delivering. Should, since we've got over 10 million, some number, maybe far in excess of 10 million of people here illegally, and in a lot of ways, they're being treated as citizens. And the Democrats like to see them be treated more like citizens. Do you think that we should make distinctions between American citizens and non-American citizens and help the American citizens first? So if there's a choice between helping one of two, we help the citizen and don't help the non-citizens. I want to give new Americans a path to citizenship. I think they can But what if they're greatly. not citizens yet? I mean, should we say, you know, you've got 100 bucks and you, got, and you have to give it to one person and one's a citizen, one not. Should we make citizens a priority over non-citizens? I still believe what my mom told me as a kid. Rising tide lifts all boats. I don't think you have to make those false So we shouldn't, we shouldn't give priority to U.S. citizens over non-citizens? No, I think we all benefit from those new Americans. You know, and I don't want them in the shadow economy. Maybe, maybe, maybe we do. Yeah. Sure we do. But should we give priority to Americans over non-Americans? No, I, I think we're, we're all in no? this together. Tucker, we're all going So uh, I'm in this place. with every person who lives in Burkina Faso and Burma? Is that what you're saying? Oh, no, I'm talking about people who are in the United States and working hard, trying to support Even their families. Even if they're here illegally, they have the same, they get the same priority. I, I want to put them on a path to citizenship. They shouldn't jump the line. I think that people who went through okay, the legal but, means... Okay, but people who are here illegally should get the same treatment I get. I don't get priority over them. I think, you know, we're all humans, Tucker, and we all want opportunity and what's best wow. for our kids. Yeah, we're all humans. I mean, I think God judges us all the same. Does the U.S. Yeah. government treat us the same? That's the question. Yeah, I think we, we should extend as much opportunity to as many people, and we all do better. All right. I don't think the middle class is going to buy that, but we'll see. Yeah. Congressman, thanks a lot. Yeah, of course.